Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Ben Thomas Show. Thanks for coming back. Today I've got another store tour for you. Now I just found this location. It is very cool. It's actually in the same mall as some of the other toy stores that I've been to, but I've never come this far down. So today I'm gonna jump in there. I'm gonna take a look at some comics, some toys, talk to the store owner a little bit, and go from there. But if you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like button, smash the subscribe for me, and let's get into it. So like I said, I've not really ever walked down this side of the mall before. I knew that the store was down here, so I should correct my original statement there. I knew it was here, I just hadn't had a chance to actually come and check it out, mostly because I thought that it was essentially comics only. But walking up to the store like this, all of a sudden you see that that is definitely not the case. Now their walls are lined with comic facing covers, which are very cool. They're definitely known for some of their variants that they have, but let's just take a look at the outside of the store first, because I just love the way that it's honestly just branded. I think it looks cool. It's super eye-catching. I love some of these old, old like comic book covers. Obviously they're not real comic books up there. <laughs> it's just a poster board, uh, but it's a really neat way to enter the store. And again, some of these covers are just crazy eye-catching. That X-Men one is really nice. I like that Hulk one too. Oh, I'm excited to get into this store. And kind of peeking through the window, like I could see a bunch of Easter eggs uh, for later. So I don't want to give too much away, but some cool stuff for sure. <laughs> I had to show you guys this because it's like every store I see this Cobra Kai turtle, but it's becoming kind of like the drinking game now. Like if you see the Cobra Kai turtles, you know, take a shot, but they're still cool. Let's be honest. That is cool. Oh, there's some kind of like Luke Skywalker down there. They have a full life-size Harley. Very nice. I know you guys can see me in the glass here. Don't mind me. Don't know what these guys are other than wrestlers, obviously, but I don't know if they're any special brand. That Magneto in the corner was kind of cool. Very random assortment of stuff in their front cases, but I'm digging it. Gives you a good kind of idea of what to expect when we get in here. Because, I mean, these are even Mayfex, st like, statues, right? So, or figures, I guess. Statues? Figures. I've never owned one. Let's get in, though. I think it's cool that they've got, like, the old-style, you know, racks here like this. And, of course, they put some of the, like, the cheaper options in here. So, like, no concern there. <laughs> but... Some still really eye-catching covers. Like, this Hulk is really cool. Green is my favorite color. So, the Hulk has always been one of my favorite characters because he honestly just stands out to me. Like, I think he looks badass. I still haven't seen Thor Love and Thunder. Um, but I like the kind of the older school uh, artistic representation of what Thor kind of looked like and some of his art style. Wolverine versus Blade. That's awesome. I actually used to work for a painting company that was situated beside a junk company. And the junk company essentially had a retail store in the back where they would sell stuff that had some value that was essentially just given away or paid to be taken away in these junk deals. And one time I came across a couple boxes of comic books and most of them were Jim Lee X-Men comics and Wolverine X-Men comics. So now in total, I think I have about 80 of them. And I got them all, I think at about, what was it, 25 cents a piece? Some of them have value, some of them have zero value, but really amazing artwork. And it kind of rejuvenated my love for comics because I hadn't been collecting them up to that point. And now of course I've got 80 of these really cool covers. I wanna get them on the wall. So, comics I appreciate. These are cool. I like the star wallpaper that they've got in the back behind those ships. That's neat. Oh, we got Morpheus up here in his chair. Decent. He -Man. Or Hulk. Oh, is it Hulk Hogan? <laughs> I almost called him He-Man. Oh my goodness. Oh, Homer Simpson there. That's amazing. Oh, the Mousers. Those are cool. Love those in Ninja Turtles. 
I might be picking up a Hot Toys Venom tonight. So I'm also going to be looking at some of the Venom covers while I'm here. That's something I'm excited about. The Hot Toys Venom has been on my radar for quite some time. Quite a random assortment of toys that are out. Now these ones that we're looking at are actually display for the store. Some of the carded figures are down below, so we'll show that to you in a second. But I asked the store manager, you know, like, how do you know people aren't just walking off with some of this cool stuff? And he's actually physically glued some of these down. So it's very difficult to walk away with them. Now I'm also taking a look here for a buddy of mine, Zach, over at Collecting Weekly. He sent our group a figure the other day that he's hoping to find. So I will keep my eye out for him. He is a Star Wars figure. It's the Star Wars Clone Wars uh, Arc Trooper. So it's the blue and white version. He's got a yellow background in behind him and it's the 50th Lucasfilm Limited uh, up in the corner. Now, if any of you lovely listeners uh, or viewers have spotted that figure and it's close in the states somewhere close to texas i believe <laughs> let me know might be able to help a buddy out some of these are cool some of these get a little bit of the light from outside though so i'd be a tad worried about fading honestly through the front windows but i mean i guess the store manager's not worried about it so it's not my store to worry still a very decent selection though considering if you are in Calgary, Alberta, this location is pretty cool. Now, in one of my previous toy tours here on the channel as well, I actually reviewed their sister location. So that was the Funko Pops Comics Trader. And they didn't have any comics over there. They had the exclusively pop collection for the most part and toys and figures. Uh, and pop, uh, what was it? Pops, Pokemon, yeah, figures, toys, lots of good stuff. Now this store, like I said earlier, has one of the best front-facing comic selections of any location I've seen. So I'm excited to show that to you. There's a little bit more of this display shelf here, like the Star Wars ships up there, that's fantastic. And essentially half a Death Star. Like how cool is that? I love the way this is displayed. This would look wicked in a Star Wars room. I'm part of the Star Wars building, uh, sorry, Star Wars room building group uh, on Facebook. Uh, and not because I can build Star Wars rooms at all, but because of some of the amazing creations people put together. And this Death Star toy setup is certainly one of them. With again, a very random assortment of toys down below. I definitely had a lot of these though when I was younger. And even now I've collected a couple of them again since. That Hulk, for me, has now stood out at about 10 different comic stores, but I'm kind of trying to hold out for a Hot Toys Hulk, to be honest, in the 6th scale. He's just really expensive. Look at this. Very nice. Okay, yeah, so Bebop and Rocksteady. We've seen this one before. This is from the newer style Turtles. I still prefer the artwork, honestly, from this time period. The 90s, the, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles com uh, not comic, but <laughs> television show for kids. It was awesome. Loved that show. Recently played the new video game, the Turtles video game that just recently came out. I would 100% recommend it. For the price, honestly, it wasn't a very long game, uh, but it was cool. It was really fun. G.I. Joe's I don't necessarily care about at this point, but I do still think that the figures look cool, so they are worth the view time. Gremlins also always catch my eye, but again, gremlins are one of those things for me that I don't know if I would collect it, I just think they're cool to look at. Same with the Nightmare Before Christmas, though. I've had an opportunity to buy a couple of Nightmare Before Christmas toys and kind of pass them up because I didn't think they'd fit with my collection. Again, cool to look at though, and Pennywise is everywhere right now. That Queen Studios Pennywise, it's beautiful. I, it, it is. I didn't think, honestly, that they'd be able to beat the Hot Toys version, but I have to say, at least in terms of the likeness to the character, in art or at Queen Studios, they definitely have punched the ticket. I will say, though, that their accessories selection is a little funny. The Star Wars collection in here is pretty awesome. Look at this, eh? That's fantastic. Jedi Spirits. They're just basically clear blue plastic figures. That's amazing. That's a cool setup, too. 
Do any of you guys out, like, out there have a collection like this? Where you have kind of Star Wars toys out, but like in either diorama setups or funky new setups? I'd love to see those. That'd be cool. I need to start maybe a Facebook group at some point so I can see everybody's pictures. Wonder Woman, very nice. That actually has a really good likeness to Gal Gadot, I will say. Mezco, eh? Hmm. So this was that light, that Luke Skywalker that I could see through the window. I'm gonna pull it out because it looks like it's hidden. Oh, yeah, weird. Okay. Do any of you guys recognize this as being like all that valuable? It's not priced very high. Kinda looks like a Barbie though. Not gonna lie, it makes hot toys look amazing. <laughs> Pokemon setups and mats. One of my viewers uh, corrected me on the mats at one point there and a couple videos back. I definitely appreciated it because I had no idea what those mats were for. Tag with it. I'm getting a picture. That's awesome. I'm digging that. All right, let's get into some of the comic covers because we have a lot of stores still left. There's a lot of real estate in this place. Are there any comics that you guys are looking for? Any that I should be aware of, maybe to keep an eye out for? Like I said, some of the comic variant covers that this location has are pretty impressive. Oh, Mr. Freeze and Harley. I like this artwork, actually. Shauna likes everything Christmas, and I try to tie as much nerdy cool shit in with cute stuff at Christmas as I can, so maybe I should get her a Mr. Freeze covered in Christmas lights comic book. <laughs> Peacemaker. That is badass. Actually today, not to speak about Hot Toys too much, but I did see that the Peacemaker is being revised for 1-6 scale, and he looks way better. That Darth Maul comic is awesome. What else is here? Wow. Some of the colors are insane. Look at these Hulk covers. That is cool. Take a shot for every time I say that is cool. <laughs> Damn, though. Oh, that maestro, eh? I've seen that Moon Knight cover around quite a bit, too, and I did actually buy a Moon Knight comic after the show ended. I know that it had some, you know... Like, it didn't have the best ending episode, but I ultimately liked the show a lot. And it brought my attention to Moon Knight. I didn't know anything about Moon Knight before the show, so. And you cannot go wrong with Venom and Carnage and Spider-Man. Like I said earlier, I'm thinking about stopping into a different comic book store tonight on the way home. Another Dimension Comics and picking up Venom. And I'm quite excited for it. Now, this location also has some... CGC uh, options. So I want to kind of check those out. I would never buy anything, I think, below a 9.6 unless it was a cover that I just absolutely loved. Uh, not necessarily because I'd want to trade them in for the value, but just because, you know, if you're paying the extra price tag for it. Some comics are just too old to be 9.6s or 9.8s, right? Like, that's just the way she goes, unless you're paying thousands. But <laughs> Davy Crockett. Like, I wonder how old that actually is. I'd be curious to look that up at home. It's a cool looking cover. Hmm. Not familiar with this line. I like the artwork a lot, though. I've always had the thing for black and white covers too, but I do really like the high color, like the bright greens or like that purple there. I don't always like the reflective covers, to be honest. I just find that they're hard to take photos of and really look at. Like that is really nice looking. I like that a lot. Wow. Okay, here we go. That one stood out to me on the shelf over there, 9.8 and it's signature series. Price is actually pretty good too. No, no, no. I can't. I can't get a CGC tonight. <laughs> I can't. I'm getting a Hot Toys today. That's a nice looking cover. Goodness. Oh, cool. Men of Action. 
I think, isn't that one of the first Marvel comics? Please let me know in the comments below if you know. I seem to remember reading that story. The Punisher has always been a cool storyline for me. However, I would say that I honestly did like the Thomas Jane Punisher, Punisher better than the newer iteration. Look at this. That's a cool looking cover. I really enjoyed the Doctor Strange film, the newest one. I know, again, it was divisive. Not everybody loved it. Uh, for me, I'm a Sam Raimi fan, so I dug it. Do they have anything else here that I'd like to look at? Those are all repeats in the back for the most part, it looked like. Now here we've got a whole Boba Fett section, which is unique. Boba Fett for me is a little bit lukewarm after the television show, but I know that he's got some amazing comic stories. And some of the artwork on these books are fantastic. And again, he's green, so <laughs> anything green cover honestly stands out for me. If I were to collect a Luke, 100% would have a green light, <laughs> a green lightsaber. Got some Wolverine covers up there. Okay. I have so many Wolverine books at home now, though, so like it wouldn't make sense for me to buy any more. But I like some of the artwork. There's literally a dragon head above me. I didn't realize it. I was standing here filming and then look up and <laughs> dragon head. Kind of random toys here. I don't know if anybody's looking for these specifically, but if you do need one, you know where to come. <laughs> so this is kind of the first row we've gone down, kind of so far anyways. There's still more toys to come and more comic variants on the other side. So let's take a better look at some of those. Some of these really stand out for me to consider pairing with more of my collection, whether that be small scale or, you know, six scale collecting. Even statues, I think comic covers with statues look fantastic. My buddy Danny over at Collecting Weekly, he's been talking a lot about She-Hulk lately and kind of, you know, posting content about it, so now it's on my radar too. It's amazing how friends in the community and even just these chats together, these store walks together, we can almost talk each other into buying certain things. <laughs> I love it, but it's hard too sometimes because before I was part of some of the groups and the communities out there, I just wasn't ex exposed, you know? Now I'm even showing you guys these stores, right? Like some of these covers are crazy. But it's cool that we do have an opportunity to see into places we might not be able to go. These Carnage covers look really good. I tend to gravitate to the comic covers that have no writing on them. Now obviously they're more expensive because they're more of a variant, but like look at that Carnage in the center there versus the one even beside it. I think it looks cool with the yellow lettering, don't get me wrong. But I like that, like, clean look where it's just the image. That's sleek. Now, some of these racks are really tall. Again, I'm just over six feet, and I'm holding the camera straight up. So I apologize that the angle and some of the glare uh, is on here. I'm going to honestly have to get a selfie stick at some point. <laughs> so if somebody wants to send me a, sel a selfie stick you don't use, <laughs> let me know. Because, uh, yeah. Some of these racks that I've been going to in some of these stores, they're just, they're just so high. So I hope you guys can still see it okay. Because they look beautiful in person. Now again, this is another kind of end cap rack. So they've got some turtles here, which is cool. I like the shredder. I like the, I love the box art. I shouldn't say that the reaction here figures, they look awesome. The packaging looks awesome. The figures themselves honestly still to me look a little cheap though. They look like they want to be the old toys of the past, of the, you know, the 90s and the early 2000s, but that they're more of like a shrunk down version of it. However, for some of my six scale collection, I've seen some like carded figures that you can get for six scale, and that looks really cool. 
shrunken down packages like this that you can have your collection holding on to. I like that idea. I had the Bebop as a kid. I don't know if it was that exact one, but it looks pretty damn, you no, know, pretty damn close in my mind's eye. G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. ones. Electra. Terrible movie with Jennifer Garner, but they tried. Although I actually did kind of like the Daredevil movie, not gonna lie. The one with Ben Affleck. I know people ban like pan him for it. This is cool. This actually looks like it comes with the book as well as the figures for Secret Wars, and I think Secret Wars in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is coming. 100%. Marvel's Hammerhead. That always reminded me of a Dick Tracy villain, that figure. I wonder if they kind of robbed the imagery from it a little bit. Now again, thinking about getting this Venom tonight, so I'm still really looking for some cool Venom covers to potentially go with it. And like I'm seeing so many that I think are cool, but I'm not sure I want to spend the money if I'm spending so much on the figure itself. But wow, look at that one. That's cool. It's like a double cover that you put side by side and it creates one large image, that's a really neat idea. I've never seen that, I don't think, before. Same there. Interesting. That yellow and brown Wolverine there looked pretty cool. Although I'd say that the yellow and blue suit is still my favorite. Kind of that 90s comic, uh, I shouldn't say comic, 90s animated television show series uh, kind of look. I like the Venom artwork that looks a little bit more like Venom fused with a person as opposed to just symbiote. Some of you that know me, I do cross-stitching for fun. When I watch television or I, you know, play games or whatever, not play games necessarily, but watch games or watch streams uh, specifically, I do this cross-stitching and I'm working right now on a Venom cross-stitch with Venom holding Spider-Man's head. It's pretty cool. I'm excited about it. I'll share it with you guys when I'm done it. But they take hundreds of hours to, to finish, so. Again, one of those, like, double comic covers like that. That's really, really cool. Oh, I like that Venom cover with the brains on the apron like that. And Spider-Man, and that's awesome. Ooh, I like the colors of this one, like the green and the purples. And like just absolutely rows of rows of comics. This is a great location. Now these guys also do take trade-ins. Now they're not going to take everything. They're not just going to take garbage. But they do bring books in. So if you have some good quality collection and you're looking to move them, I'd still contact these guys. See what they do. Really good guys in here. And ladies. I'm sure that there are ladies that work here as well. I just mean the team here are awesome folks. Worst Hulk ever. Not the toy itself. The character. Didn't love it. Mark Ruffalo was good. I just didn't like what they did <laughs> to the Hulk. These are interesting. Like, not very detailed, but cool packaging. They must be older school. I don't recognize them, to be honest. They look like older toys. Something that I like about this location specifically. Again, they're clearly pretty selective about the stuff that they bring in. That storm looks really nice. Oh, that's a weird one. Iceman 2? Hmm. I wonder what Iceman 1 looked like. See, this is kind of what I think when I think of the, the kind of old school packaging, but a figure that looks like it still has decent quality. That storm is fire. That is amazing. Same with that X Factor. I don't know what X Factor is, to be fully honest, but it looked really cool. Beautiful. Wow. Again, if you guys see any here that you think that I should come back for, that are like just like a must have, or even a must read, definitely let me know. Again, I recognize that some of these are variant covers, so it might be even kind of tough for a seasoned collector to know <laughs> what is in the content of all these, but some of my friends again like Danny over Collecting Weekly, the guy is like a savant when it comes to memory around comics it seems like. 
or he does his homework very well before he talks about it. <laughs> Morph, nice. Cowboy Wolverine, looks like he's going to the Stampede here in Calgary. Same figures. Guardians. That Spider-Man 2 is pretty cool. And the Electro, it's funny, it clearly comes with a lizard that you can build. But I wonder how old these toys are, like I wonder if it would be even worth buying any. Because if you can't fill up the collection, that would suck to have like a torso. It's clearly like a Hulk there. Drax, as well as Scarlet Witch, of course. I'm very excited for the six scale Scarlet Witch that's coming from the newest film. Very excited for that figure. I might see Thor and Love and Thunder this weekend. People have told me it's, it's terrible. Some people have said that it's good. I think I just need to go in with an open mind and just, if I enjoy it, I enjoy it. I try not to be too critical of Marvel content, to be honest, because I'm just happy to have some level of comic book representation uh, in film and have some heroes and have some laughs. But I can see why sometimes it, it bothers people, especially if you're really into comics, right? I mean, if you truly know these stories, some of them, you know, back to front, it might feel like Marvel films kind of, you know, erode <laughs> some of that, you know, well-written history. But I still think it's cool. I still appreciate it for what it is. This is one of their front-facing racks when you come into the store. Some really eye-catching artwork, though. Venom and Spider-Man playing basketball. That might be a unique one to put with my figure. <laughs> Very cool. Gwenverse. Ooh. Hellcat cover's pretty nice. Oh, that's freaky. Annabelle and the Nun. I swear to goodness, they are everywhere. <laughs> Same with these King Kongs, actually, now that I think about it. But this Frankenstein, I don't know if I've seen at any of the other locations. Hey. I love that coloration palette. Like that, yeah, that kind of grayed out look. I think that that's really cool. Or cell, was it, what would you call that? Cell shaded? Hmm. Either way, doesn't matter. I think it's cool. Captain Blake, nice. Toonie Troopers. Warhammer was not a game that I got into, but that creep show is kind of cool. Elvira. My goodness. Cool things from Warhammer, though. I will give it that. Some really, really cool imagery. Muppets, definitely not something I would collect. Cool to know that you can. Don't think I would. And some people are hardcore Muppets fans, so no shame by any stretch. have here we got some McFarlane line or DC multiverse the DC, the DC multiverse do seem like they're quite spread out through the stores always kind of varied collections I really do like that animated Superman though that's kind of right up that artistic style of the Batman the animated series that I've been collecting lately hmm Haggard Ooh, look at that Poison Ivy cover. That is pretty cool. Jeez, if you guys are drinking every time I say that's pretty cool, you're going to be wasted by now. We've only been at it for 28 minutes. <laughs> oh, I like that Batman cover too. Jeez, like a place like this is dangerous for a collector almost, hey? Because there is so much cool stuff in here. And I mean, like I said earlier in the video, they've done a good job of front-facing cool stuff. Like, I don't think there's been any covers that I've looked at that I'm like, that's terrible, I hate it, <laughs> you know? Like, I'm not a very negative person, as most of you guys already know by now, but let, like, let's be honest, I haven't seen any covers here that I'm like, that is a terrible cover. Now, I am looking quite a bit through the camera lens here as well, so when I get to rewatch this later, I might feel differently, let's be honest. But... Through my mind's eye, through the screen's eye. These are pretty awesome. 
Now I haven't been able to find any Venom yet that I want to actually commit to. But again, just because I'm thinking of kind of the purchase later, so I'm trying to budget in my mind a little bit, but I gotta say, if I were to start comic collecting, I do think it would be a slippery slope for me because I like more of these than I expected to. Now check this out. That Batwing is awesome. That would look so good with my animated Batman series toys. Peacemaker. I'm a lot more excited for the six scale version of that Peacemaker now, not gonna lie. Now that I'm seeing that they've updated it. What do we got? I don't know that character. Hmm. Surprisingly, Katana, Katana I do. Or sorry, Katana, depending on how you say it. <laughs> more DC multiverse. I don't like the art style for that Joker. Or that Robin, to be honest. The Catwoman from the Batman the Arkham games is cool. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. It's hard to show everything to you guys and not move too quickly, but not move so slowly that we're here <laughs> all day. That dinosaur cover is cool. Death Metal. Superman versus Lord? Oh, I thought no, Lobo. <laughs> The, the glare on it was so bad I couldn't read it. I wonder if they're going to come out with some cool Stranger Things Vecna comics now. I bet they do. Soul Crusher. I had a girlfriend like that. The Clown, eh? Jeez. As a kid, that thing freaked me out in that film. Check this out, though, for all my Star Trek friends. Oh, shit. That is cool. Klingon, Bird of Prey. Hot Wheels in here. That's kind of random. Hot Wheels is not something I think I've ever really got into. I Like, I had a bunch as a kid, and I had some of the tracks that I used to kind of, like, zip them around on. But I never got into collecting them. It seems like a very slippery slope as well. I mean, most collecting is, let's be honest. But, man, is there a lot of Hot Wheels. Look at these Hulk covers up top. Those are cool. Clearly, the higher they get, the more expensive they are. <laughs> so, they don't want people's grubby little, you know, peanut butter fingers touching the covers. Which is fair. And not that I've eaten a lot of peanut butter today, but... I imagine that you never know what people are going to come in with. That are like cheesy fingers. That'd be the that'd be the worst. Very much a faux pas for a comic store. Oh, look at that one. That's cool. Oh, okay, I didn't realize this is like a new arrival section. I probably should have had the store manager give me a bit more of a tour. I did ask him kind of where things were in the store, so I could kind of say, you know, this is what we're coming up to, uh, kind of corners and stuff. But other than that, he he didn't really walk me around. But it, I didn't ask him to either. So all good. <laughs> They've done a good job of keeping some of the more relevant, like, comic, like, series, anyways, uh, on the front pages for folks. Easy to find, easy to buy, right? I don't like thrift shopping because I don't like sorting through racks. I have an equally hard time with comic book stores when you walk in and all it is is, you know, looking at the spines of books in boxes. Like, you really need to know what you're looking for, and I just... For me, I buy based on the art and hope that it's a good story, and I've gotten lucky most times, but there's been a couple of comics over time uh, that I thought were duds. I, I had some Walking Dead comics that I didn't love. But I think if I'd had the anthology versions uh, where you get all the books in one, I think then I would have had a better appreciation for it. I want to find, like, the Maximum Carnage series, but in an anthology. I honestly don't even know if they make it yet, or... Have they made it? I don't think they have. I know that you can get, obviously, the Maximum Carnage series as all individual books, but I don't think it's all in one big book yet. Now, I love having the physical color. Ooh, that is creepy. 
Sorry to cut myself off, but man, that's creepy looking. Um, I've had the anthology versions of some of the Batman series, so the Nightfall Volume 1, 2, and 3, uh, which was an amazing read, by the way. If you guys get a chance to read the Nightfall series, I recommend them in the volumes, because again, you get all the books in one, and you get that consistent story throughout. Crazy read, though, and it's one of the stories where Bane breaks Batman. He breaks his back. And then kind of the aftermath of that and what happens with Azrael and, and I, I don't want to give anything away. It's a lot of really, really cool stories. So check that out if you haven't already. That swamp thing is pretty cool. Now I'm purposely looking for co covers that I think are deads. Just because everything's been pretty cool. But everything has such like an artistic approach that I, I mean... I don't know, looking for something to not like is it's tough in a store of such beautiful, beautiful stuff. Beautiful covers. That Thor is cool. Like Hulk smashing Thor out in space. Poison Ivy. It does not look like Poison Ivy, so I mean, you know. But again, multiverse. Really nice covers in here. And then this is kind of like more of the adults section, it seems like, of comic covers. So there may be some of these that, you know, aren't necessarily suitable for children, but none of my videos really are. And I gotta say, the artistic style of these are still really nice. And quite seductive. <laughs> Almost feels like some of these need to be behind uh, a door, you know, in the back back room there. Like the old, uh, the old video stores. <laughs> Not a, not a good memory, that, that, that was pretty gross. Oh, this is nice. Little extra section here. We're almost out of the store here. We're actually kind of getting to the front here now. I'm right beside the front counter. Oh, look, the McBain. That's kind of cool. I actually do like that. And the Jessica Rabbit. Now behind the counter, he's got a lot of really cool stuff. Really old looking artwork. So again, probably some of the more valuable stuff. Now you might have to pause the video here because this is about as close as I'm allowed to get. Okay, so that was an awesome store. I would definitely recommend that one. Comic Traders here in Calgary, Alberta. That's the second location in this mall. It was a cool location though. So we'll go from there, but thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Ooh, that makes me want pizza. This is the Ben Thomas Show. Have a great one. Hit the like button, smash the subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.